Good morning and welcome. Thank you for coming to this uh, Media Availability Day. Um, I'm Sarah Copeland Hansis, Vermont's Secretary of State. Uh, with me is Sean Sheehan, our Director of Elections, and we are here today to share some vital information to folks uh, in advance of our statewide primary, which is happening on August 13th. Um, we want to make sure that we take this moment to remind voters about uh, how to cast their ballot for the primary, uh, to highlight some new resources that our office has put out that you uh, will get some links to at the end um, of this press availability today, uh, and, and basically just explain some of the details about election administration in Vermont. Today is also National Poll Worker uh, Recruitment Day. And so we are encouraging Vermonters who are interested in the electoral process, who want to give back to their community and contribute to a functioning democracy, to reach out to their town or city clerk and volunteer to be a poll worker. Uh, clerks all over the state are looking for people to step up and volunteer. Um, and so making sure that you let your clerk know you're interested in and able to do that uh, is the way to start that process. So thank you in advance for jumping in to make our elections work. Um, so the statewide major party primary is just a week and a half away. Uh, voters will choose which candidates they want to represent their parties in the November general election. Uh, up for election is one of our United States Senate seats, our United States House seat, governor, lieutenant governor, treasurer, secretary of state, uh, auditor, um, attorney general, all state Senate seats and all state representative seats, um, as well as high bailiffs. Um, so voters should have a voting plan. At this point, uh, we want folks to be thinking about, am I going to go in and vote early in my town clerk's office? Am I going to request a ballot be mailed to my home? Uh, if you're going to do that, you should be doing that right away um, because with mail delays these days, uh, we want to be sure you receive your ballot uh, in time. Uh, if you've already requested an absentee ballot and you have one uh, in your kitchen sitting on the table waiting to be filled out, uh, it might be a good idea to make a plan to drop it back off in person at your clerk's office while they're open or using a ballot drop box at your clerk's office, uh, again, because of mailing delays. Um, a couple other details about voting in our statewide primary. Um, unlike the presidential primary back in March, in, in our statewide primary, you will be given all three ballots, one for the Republican Party, one for the Democratic Party, and one for the Progressive Party. You get to look at all three, and you get to choose which one you want to vote in. Uh, you must return all three ballots, okay? So if you're doing that with your um, mailing envelope, you have your mailed, your, uh, the ballot that you voted in goes in one envelope and the two that you do not vote in go in the other envelope and you must uh, sign and return all of those envelopes, all of those ballots. Um, again, mail can be slow, so please use your clerk's office drop box. Um, if you need to register to vote, uh, please go to our online voter registration page uh, at olvr.vermont.gov, online voter registration page. Um, you can update your voter registration. Uh, you can register for the first time. If you've recently moved, please update your, uh, your address so that your general election ballot comes to the right location. Um, your town clerk and city clerk can also help you get registered, and uh, they have their hours posted. There's a great guide to uh, the, all of the town clerk's offices um, on our website, and that'll be a part of the resources that we send out later on today. Um, you can, if you are registered now, you can go ahead and vote early in your clerk's office, uh, or as I said before, you can request your ballot be mailed to you. Uh, you can go pick up your ballot, take it home with you, fill it out, and turn it back in uh, anytime before or on um, August 13th. And uh, just be sure that you fill out all of the blanks on your uh, ballot envelopes before you return that. If you would like to see a copy of your sample ballot, right? Many people like to vote on election day. They like the process of going, checking in with the folks who are working at the polls, saying hello to the clerk who's administering those elections. If you want to vote on election day, but you'd like to see what your ballots are going to look like, you can go to your My Voter page and you can see a sample of your ballots. You can see 
who's running uh, all the way from, uh, from the governor's race and United States House and Senate races, all the way down through who is on your local ballot for, uh, for state rep, state senator, and justices of the peace. Um, your My Voter page is a great resource for you, and we really want voters to start looking at that for resources, because when the general election voter guide comes out, um, towards the end of September, your, your voter guide for the general election will be available through your My Voter page. Um, we've got some new resources that we've been sharing out uh, through all sorts of different channels. We've, uh, we've shared out this list of resources and we'll send it to you uh, again with, uh, with the other links that I have mentioned. Um, uh, they're going out to all municipal officials, to all town clerks. They're going out through Front Porch Forum. So if you're on Front Porch Forum, I hope you've already seen it. Uh, but we've got some really great uh, resources to help Vermonters understand elections and also to help answer some commonly asked questions. Uh, so we have a great new election security video that was created with a handful of our municipal clerks. Uh, who know firsthand all of the steps that we take in Vermont to make sure that our elections are secure. Um, that'll be available on, uh, on our YouTube page. And uh, also, you can find a great video on our website of uh, how to register and vote in Vermont elections. And that has been translated into 14 different languages. Um, and so we welcome you to take a look at that resource as well. Uh, there's also a page uh, on our website that is sort of the, the truth about um, Vermont elections. So uh, there can be a lot of mis- and disinformation out there. There can be a lot of uh, similarities and also differences between uh, election law in Vermont versus other states that people may be more familiar with. Uh, if you're looking for the true information about how uh, elections work in Vermont, um, please check out that uh, Truth About Vermont Elections page. And that is it for my set of resources, and I want to welcome Sean Sheehan to come up, and he's going to talk with you about uh, a number of data resources and also the processes for co counting on election night. So Sean, Great. take it away. Thank you. Great. So thank you. So I know a lot of you are interested in uh, when the results will come. Always the popular question. The polls close at 7 o'clock on, on August 13th. Depending on the town, they, they open between 5 and 10 a.m., but they all close at 7 p.m. After the polls close, the towns, uh, the town clerks and their, uh, their, their teams go through the, the counting. Some towns do hand counts, others have, have tabulators, and then they report the results in to us. It will be the, the unofficial results that they have that night. The, the official results will come uh, as part of a canvas, and the following day they'll, they'll count right in votes and, and they'll certify those results uh, that following Tuesday, um, August 20th, we'll have the, uh, the certification of, uh, of the official results for statewide races, for local races and legislators will be on, on, on Friday. But as far as those unofficial results that, that come in, uh, the, they get posted on, on our website at electionresults.vermont.gov. You can also get there through the Secretary of State's homepage, but the direct link is electionresults, all one word, .vermont.gov. Um, we also have a lot of information on our website about past elections. There's an election archive, and that's uh, election archive, all one word, <laughs> .vermont.gov. So electionarchive.vermont.gov has a lot of uh, information there as as well. Um, we're also, um, you know, we want, we're also letting folks know we have heard the National Association of Secretaries of State uh, has put the word out about common election scams, election season scams that happen. Um, some have to do with political donation scams. The second one is fake surveys and and polls. And a, um, a third is, is voter registration scams, where somebody will, um, we've, we've heard of some of those here, where people are getting a phone call or getting an email saying that they need to re-register to vote or need to confirm their, their registration to vote. Uh, fortunately, I think folks are calling their town clerks. They know that town clerks are the source of trusted information, and the Secretary of State is as well. And we confirm to them that they don't, unless the town clerk says they're 
uh, voter registration is challenged, they're not gonna, there's not going to be any outside party that would be contacting them uh, about that. And people can also go to the Secretary of State's website at my voter page, which is mvp.vermont.gov, uh, and you can, you can see your, um, your registration status, the address, where you are at that point for, your, for yourself. Um, so that's an information. I did bring some, some copies if anyone wants um, and more information on those three scams or I could, could serve, can share the, uh, the PDF information. Beyond that, we, do ha we also have numbers and, and data on uh, the absentee ballot requests. Uh, to date, there's been more than 22,000 absentee ballots that have been issued, uh, sent to to voters um, and nearly, eight, uh, actually just, just over 8,000 um, have been returned. So over 8,000 people have already voted, which isn't a, isn't a huge number. I think as we, as we talked about, a lot of people like to get them, maybe wait till we get closer to um, election day to vote or to come bring them into the polls um, to vote. But certainly the absentee voting and uh, has something that's increased certainly since the pandemic, but even before the pandemic increased over the, uh, the previous couple decades. So those are the main uh, sorts of information and data we have uh, on the website and are happy to help with any questions that come up between now and the 13th or after. Great. Question. Yes, so looking at those scams, what might be a more legitimate way of contacting people that you would expect? You know, if there is a problem with my registration, what would help me differentiate that this is a legitimate thing rather than a scam? Okay. Yeah, so if, if there's a, an issue um, that, did you want to? No, no, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, it, yeah, so I think it would be coming from the, from the town clerk and the, and the, and the city, city clerk if they have, um, have an issue with their registration, if they were challenged. And that's the great thing about Vermont community being so, you know, so small. Everything really, the elections are run um, at the local level. People know their, their town clerks and their, and their city clerks can reach out directly. They can, they can come right in. I think as is often the case with, with anything, whether you're talking about elections or, or any scam with um, government or, or otherwise, if you get a call that seems a little fishy or somebody could be masking their, their phone number, you know, always um, offering to, asking if you can call them back at the, pub at the published number if you're ever not sure. I think that goes for probably Department of Motor Vehicles or Agency of Human Services who have been, you know, been before, so reaching out that way. So calling, if you're not sure, if, think it, if it is your clerk, you could always offer to call your clerk back or call the Secretary of State. In the event that a clerk um, perhaps thought someone had moved out of town, they might have issued a challenge letter, but the law is very clear that we, don't, we do not uh, do massive adjustments to the voter rolls in the 90 days uh, leading up to an election. Um, and, and that is in part to make sure that we're not disenfranchising someone, uh, give them time to respond. And so a challenge letter would be something that would come into the mail to the official mailing address that you would have had on, um, on file with your town or city clerk. And uh, there is never an instance where someone will come door to door or, uh, or reach out to you by telephone to talk with you about your voter registration status. And the other thing important to note too, and the Vermont's different than many states as well, that you can register the same day. So you can go right to the polls and register to vote if you're not registered. Um, but also if there's an issue with your registration right at the polls, you can you know, sign an affidavit that you're a, you're a resident and take care of things right there as, as well. Um, so as, as the secretary said, it wouldn't be people coming door to door, but it's also not something if somebody's ur urgently saying you have to respond today <laughs> and do this, that's not the case in Vermont. Mm -hmm. I should say as well, you mentioned um, poll worker day today. I know at least two longtime city clerks have kind of stepped down and those positions were available in recent years. Can you talk a bit about having safe, secure elections and encouraging newer people to get involved with government as well? Yeah, you know, I, we've been working on ways to elevate the role of town or city clerks since I was elected uh, nearly two years ago. Um, and part of that is just as you were saying, when, when longtime clerks step down, communities are sometimes left 
scrambling to figure out who's going to step in and, and take over this role. Um, town and city clerks are critical to the functioning of local government. Um, you know, they're filing our land records and, uh, you know, they are running our local elections. And um, it's a great job that is close to home um, and involves a lot of close contact with your friends and neighbors. It, it really is a, a public service position. Um, but our office does a lot, and I'll let Director Sheehan talk a little bit more about it. We do a lot to, to train and support and give resources to our town and city clerks for a wide range of their duties, but in particular for those new clerks uh, for whom this is their first election. So why don't you talk a little bit about the, the great training that Absolutely. you had earlier this week? Absolutely. Yeah, just on Tuesday, we had a training for, for new clerks, um, an all-day training we went through, and we had about 70 clerks there, which we let them define new. Some were, some were even newer than, than me. <laughs> some were a few weeks in their job and others that had been there a couple years. But at this point, going through a presidential cycle, felt they could use that additional, additional training. And, and we went through everything from the responsibilities of, of working together with their town election workers, what to do before the election, um, day of election, post with the, with the counting. Um, we went over the accessible voting machines so that uh, Vermonters with a disability um, can, can vote and, and, uh, and do so in an accessible way. There's uh, specific machines that every, every town clerk uh, has in the, at, the, at the voting locations. And then we went through the tabulators and went through our, our systems as well. Um, we do those trainings, and I think this is probably a good point too for the uh, for people maybe interested in working and becoming more involved as clerks. Is the the support structure doesn't start and end with us. In fact, there's a terrific association, uh, the, the the Vermont Municipal Clerks and Treasurers Association, that we work very closely with. Uh, some of their seasoned pros came <laughs> to our training on, on Tuesday and to be able to share kind of the case study, study the, the examples of how um, they dealt with different challenges is, is a terrific support system for clerks and of course the Vermont League of Cities and Towns also partners with both us and the association to support those clerks and municipal officials. Uh, what's usually the margin of error or like the difference between unofficial and official election results? Like how great can the difference be? So I don't know that there's a typical uh, difference, but there's a, there's a very specific reason why um, we get you the unofficial results as quickly as we can, um, but then go back and, and carefully receive results uh, from the clerks. Um, and I can let uh, Director Sheehan talk a little bit about the, the processes that our team goes through with clerks in the 24 hours after elections. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And to the question of what the range is, I think it really, probably maybe the biggest factor may be how many, how strong of a write-in candidate, you know, campaigns there are if it's a, if it's an, if it's an election where there's a lot of Right in candidates you know, actively pushing that it would be a be a higher um, higher percentage, but they the um, teams in the local committees when they when they count the the clerk the presiding officer the clerks have other people with them they go through each vote um, if there's any question to and there's a specific guide on if it isn't clearly marked in is the intent clear uh, is the is the name if there's a right in candidate. Clear and so a lot of those pieces can um, can take time to be official and so really the the election night reporting is done as a service we know a lot of the public out there we know the media is very interested in in getting these uh, these numbers so we get the the unofficial results in from each each town work with them and then in the in the time between then and the canvas work closely with those towns and their presiding officers to support them in, in making sure that the, the count is done accurately. Yeah. 11 o'clock at night or midnight is not a great time to, uh, <laughs> to be holding someone to 100% accuracy. So it's always a good idea uh, to make sure that we uh, give time for that double, ch triple check. And uh, as the director said, um, to sort through the, uh, the write-in candidacies. Other questions? All right. 
Well, we will uh, send out a set of resources, um, some of the links that we spoke about today, so that you can share those with your uh, viewers and readers. And thank you very much for coming today.